The Genetical Theory of Natural Selection is a book by Ronald Fisher which combines Mendelian genetics with Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, with Fisher being the first to argue that, "...Mendelism therefore validates Darwinism," and stating with regard to mutations that, "...the vast majority of large mutations are deleterious, small mutations are both far more frequent and more likely to be useful," thus refuting orthogenesis. First published in 1930 by the Clarendon Press, it is one of the most important books of the modern synthesis, and helped define population genetics. It is commonly cited in biology books, outlining many concepts that are still considered important such as Fisherian runaway, Fisher's principle, reproductive value, Fisher's fundamental theorem of natural selection, Fisher's geometric model, the sexy sun hypothesis, mimicry and the evolution of dominance. It was dictated to his wife in the evenings as he worked at Rothamsted Research in the day. Contents <inaudible> 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 In the preface, Fisher considers some general points, including that there must be an understanding of natural selection distinct from that of evolution, and that the then recent advances in the field of genetics, see history of genetics now allowed this. In the first chapter, Fisher considers the nature of inheritance, rejecting blending inheritance, because it would eliminate genetic variance, in favor of particulate inheritance. The second chapter introduces Fisher's fundamental theorem of natural selection. The third considers the evolution of dominance, which Fisher believed was strongly influenced by modifiers. Other chapters discuss parental investment, Fisher's geometric model, concerning how spontaneous mutations affect biological fitness, Fisher's principle which explains why the sex ratio between males and females is almost always one-to-one, -one, reproductive value, examining the demography of having girl children. Using his knowledge of statistics, the Fisherian runaway, which explores how sexual selection can lead to a positive feedback runaway loop, producing features such as the peacock's plumage. He also wrote about the evolution of dominance, which explores genetic dominance. The last five chapters include Fisher's more idiosyncratic views on eugenics. Editions A second, slightly revised edition was republished in 1958. In 1999, a third Variorum edition ISBN with the original 1930 text, annotated with the 1958 alterations, notes and alterations accidentally omitted from the second edition was published, edited by Professor John Henry Bennett of the University of Adelaide. Dedication. The book is dedicated to Major Leonard Darwin, Fisher's friend, correspondent and son of Charles Darwin, in gratitude for the encouragement, given to the author, during the last fifteen years, by discussing many of the problems dealt with in this book. Reviews <inaudible> 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 The book was reviewed by Charles Galton Darwin, who sent Fisher his copy of the book, with notes in the margin, starting a correspondence which lasted several years. The book also had a major influence on W. D. Hamilton's theories on the genetic basis of kin selection. John Henry Bennett gave an account of the writing and reception of the book. Sewell Wright, who had many disagreements with Fisher, reviewed the book and wrote that it was certain to take rank as one of the major contributions to the theory of evolution." J. B. S. Haldane described it as, "...brilliant." Reginald Punnett was negative, however, the book was largely overlooked for forty years, and in particular Fisher's fundamental theorem of natural selection was misunderstood. The work had a great effect on W. D. Hamilton, who discovered it as an undergraduate at the University of Cambridge and noted in these excerpts from the rear cover of the 1999 Variorum edition. 
This is a book which, as a student, I weighed as of equal importance to the entire rest of my undergraduate Cambridge BA course and, through the time I spent on it, I think it notched down my degree. Most chapters took me weeks, some months, and little modified even by molecular genetics, Fisher's logic and ideas still underpin most of the ever-broadening paths by which Darwinism continues its invasion of human thought, for a book that I rate only second in importance in evolution theory to Darwin's origin. This is joined with its supplement, of man and also rate as undoubtedly one of the greatest books of the 20th century the appearance of a variorum edition is a major event unlike in 1958 natural selection has become part of the syllabus of our intellectual life and the topic is certainly included in every decent course in biology by the time of my ultimate graduation will i have understood all that is true in this book and will i get a first i doubt it in some ways some of us have overtaken Fisher, in many, however, this brilliant, daring man is still far in front. The publication of the Variorum edition in 1999 led to renewed interest in the work and reviews by Lawrence Cook, Brian Charlesworth, James F. Crow, and A. W. F. Edwards. <laughs> 